the world design being both high fantasy and kind of sci-fi dystopian at the same time, mixed in the way that it's mixed, is very compelling. How are you gonna have a caricature in a story that has an arc that does this? Put my pride and my ego and my everything aside and just, you know, the cloud's important. From Nibelheim to Costa del Sol, we're diving deeper than Cosmo Canyon on the meticulous design of the world, characters, combat, and sound in the PS5 exclusive Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in this episode of Next On Games Radar. When approaching a game as well-loved as Final Fantasy VII, you're not really confronting what it actually looked like in 1997. You're confronting the memory of what it felt like. Luckily, Square Enix hasn't cut any corners. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth features expansive locales to explore, familiar friends getting graphical upgrades, compelling acting performances, and fast-paced combat that keeps time to iconic arrangements by Nobuo Uematsu and other composers. Does the real-time action keep you engaged? The real-time action is honestly the reason I jumped into the whole Final Fantasy franchise. I wasn't a huge fan of turn-based combat, oh. and therefore that's why I never played the original Final Fantasy VII. However, with the move to a more real-time system with Final Fantasy VII Remake, that's what got me in because that control over the action itself is so satisfying and so visceral and puts you in the moment. I think it just makes the game faster and more interesting. So I think it's been a really positive change. Things like synergy abilities, the new summons and magic. I think it's going to create a really interesting package. Besides Cloud, who are your must-haves in the party? It's Tifa, 100% of the time. She needs to be there all the time because she's as important a character for me. It's not controversial to say that this series has stood the test of time because of how much gamers love these characters. With gorgeously updated graphics and stunning performances as their backbone, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth aims to have you fall in love all over again. I'm Team Tifa, uh, and I've seen the discourse online. It's Barrett that has been given the most life from these new graphics. I mean, it's that arm cannon. If you think back to the original Final Fantasy VII, it's just kind of a couple of blocky polygons. So to see that rendered in such detail brings Barrett to life and, and yeah, it's awesome. If you know the story of Barrett, which you'll find out more about the gun arm, when you understand why he has this, then you'll understand almost the significance of Barrett. You know, why it was developed, why it was made. So I had to go, okay, well, how would I do this and make him real? And we had to make him real because then he has to be relatable, right? I mean, how are you gonna have a caricature in a story that has an arc that does this yeah. throughout and all the relationships? I just did as much prep as humanly possible, created like little mood boards and all this like stuff that I would keep with me, just visual representations of Cloud, all the like details. I went on every little like Final Fantasy wiki page that I could find and just got all like the core elements. I mean, I've always been a fan of Sephiroth, just such a great design, such an interesting villain, and Vincent Valentine. Once I found him, he was always in my party. I love the idea of a character that not just had like a, a dark past tied in with Shinra and a sad victimization and, and loss of, of personal like love and, and, and life because of this, this organization. Having this changed element, this beast within that he's always kind of containing and occasionally lets out at the right target. Gamers should be jealous of the new players that get to dive into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Just imagine getting to experience this fully realized world for the first time. The world design being both high fantasy and kind of sci-fi dystopian at the same time, mixed in the way that it's mixed, is very compelling. Which location are you most excited to see? I think it's the world map. <laughs> is that a cheat answer? It's the size of it, though. It's going over those hills and those mountains and coming across rivers that you couldn't cross until you got you know, a certain chocobo or a vehicle or whatever. And I think probably most importantly, coming across the Midgar Zolom. Oh, God. Like, that's going to be a huge moment in Rebirth. The openness of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, to me, is very exciting because my favorite parts of Final Fantasy VII Remake were the more exploratory areas where you got to see other people living in this world, their stories, their reactions. I think people are starting to see, like, the scale of it. There's a lot to play around with, and 
I think that's gonna be a, a part that people are just gonna go fall in love with. There's so much for you to like entertain, to discover, to find out. There's so many Easter eggs. Music, it's key in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth with new scores, including contributions from original composer Nobuo Uematsu, bringing life to each environment, character, and battle that we've talked about so far. It's not just about background music. It's a storytelling tool that'll enhance every element of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Who has the best theme? Sid Highwind. Shout! Sid Highwind. For a character that's kind of framed as a cynical old man, and yet his character theme is so mm. like hopeful and triumphant. It makes that moment when you get there and his sort of character arc completes just hit so hard. So in combat for you, how does the music help with the gameplay experience? Not only does it sort of set the tone for the battle, particularly when you hit those boss battles, but they also set the pace, the cadence of the combat. You know that when you hear the horns swelling and, and the music rising, you know just how important the battle is and just how high the stakes are. Bro, the music takes you somewhere. I mean, the game does. You're physically playing a character as a character, but the music, man, you put that thing on uh, your earphones, yeah, it's a wrap. You're gonna be there for a minute. It's beautiful. It was very difficult the first like six months because like I saw people, I saw it all, man. I saw, I read everything. People now I still see that like want me replaced with a DLC option and that's, I get it again. But I will say this is that when I started this up until this last session of the second game and going into the next session of the third game, God willing, I will do my absolute best. Put my pride and my ego and my everything aside and just, you know, cloud's important. They booked me to do some background voices on this one, on Rebirth. And so I went in and started recording for young Nibelheim boy, way too young for my range. And I was like, this is really embarrassing. Why did they bring me in for this? The script feed that I had on the, on the screen started glitching out with all these different pop-ups. And the director was like, we're having an issue. Hold on a second. The screen shuts to black. And then like my picture comes up on the screen with a word bubble that's like, how about you play a, 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 a different character? I'm like, what is happening? And then Vincent's picture comes up on screen. They had pranked me. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Be sure to check out our next video when we take you to the number one tourist destination in all of FF7. It's the perfect place for mini games, chocobo racing, and maybe even a sweet little date with one of your party members. That's right. We'll be stacking GP at the Gold Saucer. See you then on Next on Games Radar.